Can you improve your brain's ability to learn? The answer is 100% yes, and you might actually be surprised just how much you can improve your brain function. Evidence-based protocol coming up. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Dr. Nav Badesha. If you guys enjoy this content, please be sure to click subscribe and give this video a huge thumbs up. It really helps us grow this channel. Thank you. This is what your brain cells look like when you learn something new. The neurons that are involved in this learning episode are seen growing new projections and making a new connection. Everyone's brain has unique circuits based on their experience. How your brain functions is anchored by the previous experience that you've had in your life. And it's highly customized by experiences as a child. Here's a few scientifically proven methods you can start using right now. Number one, distribution practice. Scientists looked at 254 studies involving more than 14,000 people and they were able to show that students remembered more after spaced study than cramming. Cramming is better than not studying in the short term, but you might find it interesting that studying one hour over the course of seven days has been shown to be better than studying seven hours straight in one day. Number two, the protege effect. We have a famous saying in medicine, it's see one, do one, teach one. Studies have shown that students who taught younger students scored higher than students who learned for themselves. This phenomenon is known as depth of processing. Number three, creating memory palaces. Walk through the environment you choose like your house. Place objects in specific places like flashcards and match the objects with the things that you want to learn. You think to where those notes are in your house, which object did you attach it to, what's the color, and you reapply this. This technique maps new information onto something that your brain has already evolved to do extremely well, which is recall imagery in specific locations. Next we have the Zay Garnick effect. You remember unfinished tasks better than tasks you complete. When we interrupt a task, it creates task-specific tension which has been shown to improve cognitive function. It's the little tiny tension that you feel when you need to finish something and you haven't done it yet. It suggests that students who take studying breaks during which they do unrelated activities like playing the piano, going on a walk, or reading a book, they would remember material better than students who go through longer study sessions without taking a break. Students commonly prefer to use the Pomodoro technique where you work for about 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. Number five, persistence, intensity, and subjective importance of acquiring the skill. In order to modify our brain, something has to be persistent enough, practice aka repetition, or intense enough, or subjectively important enough. Number six, very focused, deliberate effort. Strain and agitation is an important part of learning. This is the brain queuing up systems in the brainstem. The effort process doesn't feel good, but that agitation is you getting better. We can associate a sense of reward with this process and leverage it to our advantage. Number seven, chunking, a way of dealing with or remembering info by separating it into smaller groups or chunks. Examples of this is phone numbers, social security numbers, and date of births. They're all lists of numbers that are broken down into three separate parts. Chunking can be used as an everyday memory enhancer, but researchers have also found that you can improve your ability to effectively chunk information over time. More practice, equals more efficiency. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your questions below. Thanks, guys.